From Hollywood, the Raleigh Cigarette Program, starring Red Skelton with Ozzie Nelson and his orchestra, Harriet Hilliard and Wonderful Smith. <laughs> When we talk to you about Raleigh cigarettes, remember this. We're not asking you to switch to Raleigh's just because of what we say. All we ask is that you make this one simple comparison and prove to yourself the superiority of Raleigh cigarettes. Compare the open ends of a pack of Raleigh's with any other cigarettes. Any others. You'll find the tobacco in Raleigh's unmistakably more golden in color. And what does this mean? Well, experts judge tobacco quality by color. They know the golden tobaccos are choicer, more expensive. And by this simple comparison, you can see for yourself that Raleigh cigarettes do give you the finer, the more expensive golden tobaccos. That's why Raleigh's are distinctively outstanding in taste and flavor. And Raleigh cigarettes give you valuable coupons, too. Redeemable for over 70 luxury premiums. They are redeemable for United States defense stamps and bonds. Yes, you can buy bonds with Raleigh coupons. Friends, it pays in many ways to smoke Raleigh's. The pack with a coupon on the back. Raleigh cigarettes. with their version of Fine and Dandy. And now the star of our show, Metro Golden Mayor's newest young comedian, Red Skelton. Thank you very much, and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. How are you tonight, Truman? Hi, Skelton. Say, Red, you look a little tired tonight. Yeah, I am a little tired, Truman. I was up all night guarding the, my rubber goulashes. <laughs> now, wait a minute, Red. Nobody would steal your rubber goulashes. Oh, no. Last week, somebody stole my uncle's upper plate. Really? Yeah, and not only that, they picked all the rubber out and sent the gold back. <laughs> Say, did you hear what they're going to do with the Charlie Chaplin picture, the gold rush? No, what? They're going to make it over and call it the rubber rush. <laughs> well, I guess you're right, Red. When you leave your car out on the street these days, you're really taking a chance. Yeah, you know, speaking of taking a chance, have you noticed how everybody misses Santa Anita? Say, they really do miss Santa Anita, don't they? Yeah, thousands of people are homeless. <laughs> Well, I'll tell you one thing. With Santa Anita closed, I've now got a shirt to send to the laundry. (laughs) (laughs) See, I'm having a little trouble with them, too. I wish that laundry would leave a little more shirt on my cuffs. (laughs) Red, last year, did you go to Santa Anita much? Not after I had that embarrassing experience. You had an embarrassing experience? Yeah. What happened? Well, after the last race, I was climbing back over the fence, and I tore my barrel. (laughs) My grandmother came home in a barrel once. <laughs> she did, Ozzy? Yes, it was a small barrel, and she couldn't get it off. She couldn't? What happened? Nothing. She just aged in the wood. <laughs> Hello, Red. Hello, Harriet. How are you? I'm fine. Oh, Sam, am I interrupting anything? No, I was just talking to Uzi. <laughs> <laughs> Say, Red, is it true that you're disappointed about Santa Anita being closed just because you bought a horse? Well, yes. Is he a racehorse? Well, I don't know. Every time somebody yells they're off, he looks at him and says, You can't kid me, I don't wear any. <laughs> he doesn't sound like a very intelligent horse. I guess not, but he's very nervous and high strung. He is? Yeah, the slightest noise, and he'll rear up on his knees. <laughs> picture of your horse in that new movie magazine called Stardom. Oh, yeah, Stardom magazine. Say, that wasn't a picture of my horse. That was me. <laughs> well, my goodness, who was riding you? My girl's father. <laughs> I had a girlfriend once. <laughs> What'd she do, lose an election bet? <laughs> no, she was a very nice girl, as a matter of fact, but she was very fat. Well, just how fat was she? Well, one night she sang... All of me, why not take all of me? 
and they did in a truck. <laughs> Poor Ozzy. Somebody ought to tell him that the blackout's over. <laughs> Mind, Ozzy. Tell me more about your horse. Well, last week at one of those eastern tracks, he ran in his first race, and I bet all the money I had in the world on him. Gee, you bet all the money you had? Yeah. How'd he make out? Could you spare a dime for a cup of coffee? <laughs> It seems the general public has been led to understand that we musicians talk with a lot of special words. Of all the silly notions about guys that play in bands, that is the absurdest of absurds. Musicians speak plain English just like normal people do. They don't talk in any special way. Now, for instance, if a trumpet player buys himself a suit, He'll just walk into a tailor shop and he'll say, I want a zoot suit with a reed pleat, with a drape shape and a stuff cuff to look sharp enough to see my Sunday gal. I want a reed sleeve with a right stripe and a dress vest with a glad plaid in the latest fad to see my Sunday sal. I want to look keen so my dream will say You don't look like the same boy So keen that you'll scream Here comes my walking rainbow So make a zoot suit with a reach pleat With a drape shape and a stuff cuff To look sharp enough to see my Sunday gal Now could anything be simpler than that? Are you folks hep to what I'm driving at? Now that's the kind of jive that's all the go. Here comes a debutante I know. Let's listen to her. I want a brown gown with the zop top, with the hip slip, and the lace waist in the sharpest taste to see my Sunday man. I want a scat hat with the trim brim and the zag bag with the rip zip to look plenty hip to see my Sunday man. I want to look keen so my dream will say, ain't I the lucky fella so keen that he'll scream. Baby's in technicolor, so make a brown gown with the zop top, with the hip slip, and the straight laced waist in the sharpest taste to see my Sunday man. That was Harriet and Ozzie getting in the groove with a zoot suit. Mighty solid sending, too. Thanks, Red. So you sure had fun up in San Francisco, didn't you? Yeah, I'll say. How did it feel to be in the big city and see all the big buildings? I've seen big buildings before. In fact, I used to work in them. You did? Sure, and to prove it, let's peek in on a few things that happen in office buildings. First, we have an office of a big insurance man. Hello, Death Valley Life. I would like to buy some fire insurance. Fire insurance? Uh, Where's your house? I'll be right over. Oh, I don't have a house. Then what do you want with fire insurance? Well, I've been suffering lately with a heartburn. (laughs) Yes. I hope that writer is well out of town by now. (laughs) Say, uh, Miss Demeanor, were there any more calls? Uh, Yes, sir. A man called and wanted some rain insurance, but I didn't sell him any. Well, why didn't you? It never rains in California. Oh, no? Well, what are those dark clouds overhead? Those are empties coming back from Florida. <laughs> Say, uh, did you call Wonderful, the new shine boy? Yes, sir. He's on his way up. Yeah, the first chance I get, I'm going to sell him a policy, too. <laughs> Good morning, sir. Mrs. Kellen, could you use a shoe shine? Yes, I could. Uh, but be very careful about getting polish on my underwear. <laughs> Say, how's business? Oh, I still operating in the black. Yeah. <laughs> uh, would you like a cream shine or a regular shine? Well, how much is the cream? Fifteen cents with choice of two cereals. 
Yeah. Well, I don't want to spend too much money on these shoes. The rubber heels are nearly gone. Well, why don't you buy a new pair, sir? New pair of rubber heels? You kidding? I couldn't even afford to have a retread. <laughs> hey, go ahead and shine my shoes, though. All right, so just put your foot right up here. Okay. My, my, my. What's wrong? Something the matter with my feet? Uh, no, sir, there ain't nothing the matter with them. But they sure been getting plenty of vitamins, ain't they? <laughs> are you inferring that my feet are big? Oh, no, sir, I didn't say that. But there's something I'd like to ask you. Yeah, what's that? What shipyards do you get these shoes from? <laughs> now, come on and shine my shoes, will you? Oh, by the way, I had a little trouble last week. Some arsenic accidentally mixed with my shoe polish. Oh, uh, did your customers complain? Oh, uh, they couldn't. They died with their boots on. <laughs> Well, I'll just work it. Don't make so much noise with that shine rag. All right, sir. I'll be as quiet as a graveyard. Yeah, a graveyard. Say, that reminds me. Do you carry any insurance? Sir? I say, do you carry any insurance? No, sir. It's all I can do to drag myself around. <laughs> no, no. I mean, do you have an insurance policy? What'll happen if you die? The Los Angeles Chamber of Commerce will deny it. Well, what kind of policies do you carry, sir? Well, I've sold a lot of policies to the movie stars. Lana Turner took out jewelry insurance. Dorothy Lamour took out sarong insurance. And Gypsy Rose Lee took out insurance, too. <laughs> hmm, that sounds very interesting. Yeah, my last policy, I sold to Buddy Bear. It was uh, a two-minute endowment policy. <laughs> But my boy beat him in 256. Yeah, we paid him right on the spot. Of course, we cleaned up the spot first. <laughs> Say, now, uh, how about taking out an insurance policy? Well, I don't know. How much do they cost? Well, that's a question of what kind of a policy you want. Now, we have a special policy that pays you, that's in the event of death, $50 a week for the rest of your life. <laughs> that sounds suspiciously good. <laughs> you mean you'll take one? Uh, let's step into this next room here and roll these Central Avenue golf balls. Uh, and if you win, I buy the insurance. Okay, I was always pretty lucky at dice. Hello, just Belly Life Insurance. <laughs> minute. Uh, be careful there, bub. Don't get the polish on my sock. Okay. <laughs> then we have a lady and her little boy. They're going to visit the papa's office, and Harriet, you be my mother, and I'll be the mean old kid, huh? <laughs> Step right into the elevator. Going up. Oh, boy. What's the matter, Junior? Is your heart in your mouth? No, but I think my pants are in the basement. <laughs> Let them out in front, please. Hey, let them out in the back, too. <laughs> hey, that door closed on me pants. Oh, leave it to you to get into trouble. Here, let me unhook your pants. Okay, don't tell me. They're all I got. All right, there, now let's get going. Okay. Mommy, is this where Pop's office is at in this big building? Yes, darling. Here's your father's office. See the sign on the door? Oh, yeah. It says Opportunity Investment Company. No bet too small, suckers cleaned and died. <laughs> Junior, that's not your father's office. It's this one over here where it says Smith, 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 and Brown. How did Brown get in there? Well, he's the only one with a brand new set of tires. Oh. Come on. We'll go and see your father. Okay. It's a big place, ain't it? Well, this is your father's office. That's your secretary over there. That beautiful blonde with a blue eye, did Pop secretary? Yes, that's her. Yeah, we thought Pop was doing air raid warden duty, didn't we, Ma? <laughs> Good morning, Mrs. S. I see the little monster is unshackled today. <laughs> oh! Junior, what are you doing to that man's shoe? It's all right, Mom. I will get the fiery thing with you. <laughs> Young man, what you need is a good strapping. Uh, Why don't you give it to him? Well, I'd like to, but my husband uses an electric razor. <laughs> then why don't you plug him? In. <laughs> Junior, put that bean blower away. Oh, I'll hit him. I it's hope not I hit polite that. to point. 
Seems to me that you've been looking for a spanking. I don't have to look for them. They're always there. <laughs> now, come on. Come on. We'll go into your father's private office. Okay. Oh, there's more room than that bed plate, aren't there? Father, good morning, dear. Good morning, darling. What's that with you? <laughs> well, that's Junior, our son. Oh, for a minute there, I thought I'd been drinking. <laughs> How are you feeling, Junior? Been eating your spinach? Yeah, I've been eating my spinach. Are you sure you've been eating your spinach? Yes, I've been eating my spinach. <laughs> what do you want me to do to prove it? Chew my cud? <laughs> Daddy, Junior's been a very good boy, and that's why I'm here. Yeah. I-, I need some money to buy him some clothes. You need some money? Well, yes, dear, I do need some money. Really, I do. I know I shouldn't have come here, but it was necessary. Well, I know I shouldn't have bothered you while you were working, but I've just got to have some money. I've just got to. What a performer! (laughs) Now, Junior, you keep quiet. Go away now. Let me talk to your father. Okay. Mommy, I would just look at the view from that window. Gee, we go high up, ain't we? Junior, stop leaning out of that window. You might fall on somebody. <laughs> Did you hear me? Well, don't yell at me. You scared me, too. <laughs> now, as I was saying, Homer... Wait a minute. Where's Junior? I'm up here on the chandelier, mommy. Oh! Just like the Nazis, I've fallen back to our new position. <laughs> I ain't a bad boy, ain't I, Mommy? Oh, yes, you yeah, are. I'm happy with my And job. if you do that again... <laughs> Listen to me. If you do that again, I'll stop paying the carrying charges on you. Yeah. <laughs> I've got a good mind to smack the... Don't you hit me. You hit me, I will tell. You'll tell what? I will tell everybody that you used to be a live bait girl on a barracuda bar. <laughs> Junior, why can't you be a good boy? I don't know. I know you're a good boy down deep inside of you now, aren't you? Yeah, I got that locked-in flavor. (laughs) But I never let it out. (laughs) Well, your father and I are going into the next room to talk. Now, you stay here in his office. Okay. And there's one thing that I want to warn you about. What's that, Mommy? Don't throw the ink bottle into the electric fan. I won't, Mommy, but thanks for the idea. (laughs) Well, here I am, all alone. Gee, look at that big pencil sharpener. That gives me an idea. I think I would stick my finger in the sharpener and get a manicure. <laughs> no, I won't, neither. Gee, I get bored. <laughs> I think I will go over and throw another brick through Mrs. Uppington's window. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look, there's a telephone. Let me see. Who do I know in Moscow? <laughs> No, I changed my mind. I think I'll just snoop around a bit. Gee, there's that big bottle of ink. <laughs> nice black ink, too. <laughs> no, they're like we fire. <laughs> if I do, I get a whipping. <laughs> I do it. <laughs> I will turn on the light we fan and throw the bottle of ink into it. <laughs> Hold on your hat, folks. Here comes the bottle of ink into the light we fan. Junior, my goodness, what happened? Say something. Say something. Mammy. <laughs>
Ozzie Nelson and his orchestra playing the pulpit. Uh, wait, I'll get it. <laughs> the pulpit got a pedal. <laughs> you pick out another title, that next week you announce your own numbers. <laughs> uh, you need an announcer, Red. Yeah, I'm your man. Okay, Brad, the mic is yours. Friends, let's play a little game. In this hand, I hold a lot of colorful advertising. In the other, a very beautiful gift. Now, you can't have both, even though both in reality are advertising. Which do you choose? Why, the gift, of course. And it's on this principle that Raleigh cigarettes advertise to you. The magnificent premiums you get with Raleigh coupons are a form of Raleigh cigarette advertising. Bought and paid for out of our profits, just like any other advertising. It is our belief that this is the best way to dramatize, that is, to pleasantly impress upon you that Raleigh's give you more for your money. A cigarette blended from only the golden, the choicer, more expensive tobaccos for far greater smoking pleasure. The finest cigarette modern equipment and scientific manufacture can produce. Frankly, we want to spend our advertising money with you because we feel that will do us the most good. For every time you see one of the 70 handsome premiums, you'll be reminded over and over that it pays in many ways to smoke Raleigh's. The pack with a coupon on the back. Raleigh Cigarettes. <laughs> back to Red Skelton, where we find him as Clem, the fellow from the country. Clem is now in the city working as a window washer on one of those tall office buildings. Well, here I am. <laughs> Way up on the 86th floor, washing windows. Oh, you boy, heard the wind, heard the wind. <laughs> and if I step back, I will. <laughs> do, 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 do. <laughs> well, got that one pretty. Well, I'll step over to the next window now. <whistles> oh, I dropped my lunch. <laughs> Gee whiz. I'm glad it wasn't in me. <laughs> Daisy June is. She's scrubbing one of these offices along here somewhere. Here's an office. I'll see if she's in there. I just poked my head through the window. <laughs> Don't worry, folks. Didn't cut myself. <laughs> it's that safety glass. Hello, Clem. Well, Daisy June. <laughs> you, Daisy June? Just dandy, Clem. How do you like washing windows on the 86th floor? It's okay, but the elevators ain't running. And every time I fall off, it's an awful long walk back up. <laughs> well, I guess I better go and scrub some floors now. That scrubbing's hard work, ain't it? Clem, I got so many splinters in my knees, I wash them with beeswax. <laughs> I don't like this job, Clem. No, oh, what's wrong with being a, a scrub woman, Daisy June? Well, nothing, but I'm just not used to this kind of thing. I'm used to doing delicate work, like plowing or pitching hay. <laughs> well, I like you this way, with your blue eyes and your brown skin and your blonde broom. <laughs> here, they got it awful dirty. Yeah, it is a little dirty, ain't it? They've been throwing a party. Yeah, and they threw it all over the floor. <laughs> Besides, I don't like being a scrub woman anyway. You promised me that if I came to the city, you'd get me a job in the Follies. Well, I did get you a job in the Follies. Yeah, but who wants to spend every night in the theater scraping the gum off them seats? <laughs> I ain't happy. I want a fur coat like them other girls. Oh, Daisy June. <laughs> you don't want to be like them other girls, do you? That I do, that I do. <laughs> I want an apartment and lots of jewelry, too. Well, you got jewelry. I have? Sure. Don't you remember that beer bottle top necklace I gave you? <laughs> oh, that ain't worth anything. It's just tin, and tin ain't worth nothing. Well, that's what you think. 
From what I read in the papers, it won't be long till you'll be going into a grocery store and say, give me a bag of soup. <laughs> well, maybe you're right, Clem. Maybe I should be happy here in the city. Yeah, well, I gotta mosey along now. I gotta wash those windows in the stockbroker's office. I finished cleaning up in there, but I had a little trouble with the ticker tape. You did? Yeah, I washed it out all right, but I had no place to hang it up. <laughs> you know, I made a mistake the other night. I used too much soap when I scrubbed the floor. Well, they should have told you that that soap lathers very quick. Yeah, sure was funny, though. Two days, the second floor had a head on it. <laughs> oh, my back. Clem, I'm tired of being a scrub woman in this here office building. I'm going to quit. Now, Daisy June, you don't want to quit being a scrub woman now. Well, why not? Because I bring you a present. Here, I will unwrap it for you. You'll love it. There, what do you think of it? Clem, you shouldn't have done it. Yes, I should. It's just what you needed, a new mop bucket. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I... I'll help you wash the windows. Would you? Sure. I'll, I'll, I'll just step out and wash the windows around the corner. Okay. Clem! The edge of the building has fallen! I'm falling! Well, hold on, Daisy June. I'll come and help you. I must be brave. I must be strong. I must be nuts. <laughs> oh, no, no. Ah! No, I bounced. Ozzy and the band are playing Anything Goes. So here goes for a message of particular interest to all pipe smokers. Pipe smokers, from the first puff to the very last, Sir Walter Raleigh is richer, more flavor-packed. That's because Sir Walter Raleigh is made from selected burleys, carefully cured and aged, and blended into a masterful mixture that's richer, smoother. And Sir Walter Raleigh's particular crimp cut assures cool, biteless smoking. It has an extra pleasing, fragrant aroma, too. Yes, gentlemen, start smoking Sir Walter Raleigh, and you'll finish each pipeful with the proof that it's the quality pipe tobacco of America. Tonight, try Sir Walter Raleigh. Red Skelton with Ozzie Nelson and his orchestra, Harriet Hilliard, Wonderful Smith, and yours truly, Truman Bradley. We'll all be back at the same time next Tuesday. Until then... This is Red Skelton saying goodbye now. Thanks for listening. Red Skelton is heard on this program through the courtesy of the Metro Golden Mayor Studio. This is the Red Network of the National Broadcasting Company.